Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and assalamu alaikum to you all. On behalf of DHU Education System, I welcome you all in my computer science class. Course code is 2210. In week 5 for class C1, format of this session will be carried out by taking review of the topics covered in week 4, that is error detection methods. Then the topics to be covered in week 5 and their learning objectives will be discussed. Content will be explained and this time uh, the content is very simple and brief because it consists of the key term definitions and we are going to finish chapter number 2 in this lesson. After that a quick recap will be taken and in the end you can download the assignment from the DHA portal to solve. In week 4, we talked about error detection methods in detail. Error basically is a condition when the output information does not match with the input information. Uh, during transmission, uh, digital signals suffer from noise. That means uh, 0 bit is replaced with 1 or maybe 1 is changed to 0. So that can cause the error. Um, the error can also be due to the hardware failure or soft software crash. Uh, there are various uh, techniques um, to validate the data uh, that we can apply on the data field. Uh, so we have validation technique. Validation basically is a process of checking if data satisfies certain criteria when you are inputting that data. We can apply the validation checks on the data field. Uh, we have different sort of checks that we can apply on a certain field. For example, range check, length check, character check, format check, limit check, presence check, consistency check, and check digit. Similarly, we have verification te techniques. Uh, verification basically is a way of preventing error when data is copied from one medium to another medium. For example, from your uh, hard disk or from your CD to uh, uh, USB drive. Uh, so basically, there the verification is needed in that way when you're copying your data. So we have different sort of checks that we can apply. Uh, for example, double entry, visual check and parity check. In the context of your syllabus, there are a few error detection methods that we discussed in detail uh, like check digit, parity check, check sum, automatic repeat request and echo check. Now let's take a quick recap to see what are what were these methods. Check digit method. Before uh, calculating the check digit, uh, we need to know what the check digit method was. Check digit method is basically a method that possibly avoid transmission, transcription, and transposition error. A check digit is the final digit in the code of numbers. It is calculated from all the other digits in the code. Uh, its purpose is to spot human error on data entry. So data entry is basically the trans description. So now, now let's calculate a check digit uh, method with an example. For example, we are given an ISBN number uh, and we are going to calculate the check digit for this ISBN number. Uh, in the example one, you can see there is an ISP number 02015308282 and the question mark is here which indicates that uh, we need to put check digit here. So we need to calculate that. So for the very first step is we need to put the digit position on each of the uh, digit of the ISPN number. We'll start from the extreme right side and we'll increment the digit position by one so on the number we have uh, put the digit position okay let me tell you one thing uh, you can uh, put the digit position from right to left or from uh, left to right uh, when in the exam you are going to get some sort of question always an example will be given you need to comprehend that example and then by following that the steps given in that example you will be calculating the check digit Anyway, now come at the step two. Each digit is then multiplied by its digit position and the totals added together. So in this way, we get uh, the total, which is 98. In step three, 
the total is then divided by 11 because in the question it is mentioned that uh, you are using modulus 11 technique so uh, you will divide the total by 11 and uh, the remainder uh, you will need to see the remainder if there is any remainder you will uh, subtract um, that remainder from 11 and then this is how you're going to get the check digit we got the answer after calculation 98 when we divide 98 with 11 we get 8 as answer in quotient which is of no use right now so we need to look at the remainder remainder is 10 now we are going to subtract that 10 from 11 and we got one here so this gives a check digit of one so the final ISBN number becomes 0201530821 so this is how the check digit is calculated and the number ISBN number when will be transmitted the check digit will be sent alongside and at the receiving end the check digit will be calculated or recalculated and in the remainder if somebody gets the answer zero it means that the number is correct so this was the method to calculate the check digit now let's see in another example how the computer recalculates the check digit to check the correctness of a check digit the computer recalculates it in the following way here we have another example again we have taken an ISBN number the number is 01315 and uh, X is mentioned here instead of that check digit so X is here X in the question it is mentioned that X to represent the number 10 so the very first step is the same the position of each digit is considered in the second step each digit is then multiplied by its digit position and the totals added together so here you need to see uh, you need to recall basically that x is equals to 10 so 10 will be multiplied with its digit position which is 1 then 7 will be multiplied with its digit position that is 2 4 will be multiplied with its digit position that is 3 and so on so in this way we are going to get the uh, total which is 132 step 3 the total is then divided by 11 if there is no remainder then the check digit is correct so we had a number 132 we divide it with 11 we got the remainder 0 this is fully divided so we can conclude that the check digit is correct so this is how we can check the validity of that check digit then we talked about the parity check method Parity checking is one method used to check whether data has been changed or corrupted during transmission from one device or medium to another device or medium. In the parity check method, data is transmitted in the form of one byte alongside one parity bit that we add at the start of that byte. Now, the user which is a sender and the user which is a receiver need to agree upon the rule that whether data will be sent on the even parity rule or on the odd parity rule in case of even parity the number of ones need to be observed in a byte if there are two number of ones or four number of ones or six number of ones or eight number of ones then the parity bit will be set as zero while in the odd parity if there are two number of ones four number of ones six number of ones or eight number of ones the parity bit will be set as one similarly the parity bits can be applied on the parity block 
Table 2.2 is a thorough example of that parity block where the data is present in the form of various bytes and uh, at the start of each byte parity bit is calculated. Then we discussed about the checksum method. Checksum method is applied on a block of data instead of one byte of data. A block of data is sent along with a calculated checksum value. The receiving computer also calculates what it believes should be the checksum. The checksum values are then compared to see if an error has occurred during the transmission. After that, we discussed about automatic repeat request. This form of error detection method uses a system of acknowledgement and timeouts. Automatic repeat requests are often used to ensure reliable transmission over an unreliable service. So here in the figure, you can see there is a sender and there is a receiver. So sender sends the data and the receiver sends the acknowledgement. Again, data sends the data and the receiver is not sending the acknowledgement. So time is out. So the user again sends data and the receiver sends the acknowledgement. So this is how the automatic repeat request work. After that, we discussed about echo check. With an echo check, the receiving computer sends a copy of the data immediately back to the sending computer for comparison. This sending computer compares the two sets of value to check if any error occurred during the transmission process. If an error has occurred, the data will be transmitted again. But there is a drawback of echo check method. And that drawback is if the two sets of data are different, will, you will have no way of knowing whether the error occurred when originally sent or when it was sent back. So these were the error detection methods we discussed in details. So now let's um, start the lesson of week four. In week five, we are going to finish chapter number two with the topic Internet Principles of Operations. This is going to be a very simple and brief topic which includes the key term definitions of Internet, Client Server Architecture, Web Client, Web Server, Web Browser, ISP, Protocol, HTTP, HTML, IP Addressing, MAC Addressing, and Cookies. We have already discussed about HTML, IP and MAC addressing and cookies in chapter number one. By the end of this lesson, students, you will be able to define key terms related to Internet principles of operation, explain thoroughly client server architecture and list example that you are going to relate with the topic. So let's start. In this modern era, we all are using internet. We are using internet to check our emails. We are using internet for e-learning. We are using internet to watch news for social networking, for online banking, for online shopping, for online games, and much more. So what basically is the internet? The Internet is a global system of interconnected computer networks that use the standard Internet protocol suit to serve billions of users worldwide. Internet basically is a network of networks that consist of millions of private, public, academic, business and government networks of local to global scope that are linked by a broad array of electronic, wireless, and optical networking technologies. Internet carries an extensive range of information resources and services, such as interlinked hypertext documents of the World Wide Web, which is known as WWW, and the infrastructure to support email, 
it is important to comprehend the concept of client server architecture in the context of network network is when two or more than two computers are interconnected for the sake of sharing information a network architecture in which each computer or process on a network is either as a client or a server so a server system is basically a system which is providing the services while the client systems are the systems which are taking the services from the server system internet server is also known as a web server this is a special computer on which websites are stored web server is constantly switched on and connected to the internet so that each internet user around the world can access websites at all times this computer is built up with selected high quality component which can sustain continuous work and high loads clients are pcs or workstation on which users run application so clients can be known as nodes workstations or pcs which are taking the services from the server computer here we have the example of traditional client and server architecture in the first diagram you can see clients are putting their request and the server machine is responding to those requests in the second diagram we can see there is a system that is known as web client and there is a machine or system which is known as web server the web client is putting the request through the internet and the web server after authenticating the request sending the response back to the client for example the web client put a request to open www.yahoo.com the web server authenticate the request and see if there is a valid registered site www.yahoo.com exist it validate the request authenticate it and then send the response back to the web client at at the web client screen the site www.yahoo.com will be opened in client server architecture we have already discussed about web client generally a web client is a computer on which user actually works it has web browser to locate retrieve and display content on web server the user logs on to a client computer which then connects to the server verifies the user and then allows them access to the files stored on the server that they have permission to access web server we have already discussed web server in this session web server is a special computer on which websites are stored web server is constantly switched on and connected to the internet so that each internet user around the world can access websites at all time the computer stores websites images and videos and the other files web browser i presume that each one of us is very well familiar with the web browser formally web browser is a software application used to locate retrieve and also display content on the world wide web including web pages images videos and other files the major web browsers are internet explorer google chrome mozilla firefox opera and safari right now i am using google chrome and what about you well you must be using google chrome or mozilla firefox or maybe internet explorer most of the web browsers share different features but traditionally there are few features that are common for example they have a home page they have the ability to store a user's favorite website or web pages 
the keep a history of the websites visited by the user. They give the ability to go backward and forward to websites opened. Users can either click on a link such as www.hoddereducation.co.uk slash IGCSE or they can type in the Uniform Resource Locator URL manually in the address bar. The web browser will break up the URL or the website address into the three part. For example, uh, when we type www.hoddereducation.co.uk slash IGCSE underscore computer science underscore uh, underscore computer underscore science. So this is converted into HTTP colon double slash or HTTPS colon double slash. This is basically the protocol used. We'll see in the next few slides what is HTTP then uh, the harder education basically this is the web servers name and IGCSE underscore computer underscore science this is the file name and um, or you can also say that this is the web page which is displayed in the web browser ISP or Internet Service Provider. We all need to know about ISP and I presume many of us already knew about it. Every user makes use of an Internet Service Provider. These are the companies basically that provide the user with access to the Internet. A monthly fee is usually charged for this service. The ISP will set up a user account which will contain a username and a password. Most ISP also give the user an email address. Uh, before ISP became common in the 1990, internet access was usually limited to users who were uh, the part of a university or the government agency. But later, internet has become a commercial use and now everybody, everybody is using internet. Protocols. Protocol is a term that I have used numerously in this session. A protocol is the set of rules that define how devices communicate. For example, how the communication will start, the transmission speed, the significance of bits being transmitted, how the bits will be delivered one at a time or in group of 16, for example, and what will be the error checking procedure uh, that will be used between uh, the sender and the receiver. So this is all uh, decided through the set of rules known as protocols. The internet protocol is known as TCP IP, which is Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol. HTTP HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, the underlying protocol used by the World Wide Web. HTTP defines how messages are formatted and transmitted, and what actions web servers and web browsers should take in response to various commands. For example, when you enter a URL in your browser, this actually sends an HTTP command to the web server directing it to fetch and transmit the requested web page. When some form of security in the form of SSL certification is used, then this changes HTTP to HTTPS. You also often see padlock sign in the status bar. The letter S after HTTP refers to HTTP over secure. It is slower to use HTTPS than HTTP. HTTPS is usually only adopted where sensitive or private data is being transferred across the internet. HTML. HTML is the mother tongue of your browser. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is the language that is used to author the web pages 
This is used to create web pages and other information that can be displayed in a web browser. The websites are developed in HTML and stored on web servers. When user types the URL of a website, browser locates and fetches the website from the server on client's computer and displays the content. There are two very, very important things to note when we are designing a web page or a website. Number one is the structure and number two is the presentation. Structure is the essential part of the HTML document. It includes the semantic and structural markup of the document. So simply we can say that structure is basically the defining of the layout of the website. While presentation is the style of the document, that is how the document will look or even sound if it includes multimedia uh, elements. These two features must be kept separate throughout the designing of the web page. So structure is basically the layout of the web page and presentation is how you're going to present your data on the web page. At the end of the design process, the author should have an HTML document which contains the structure and the actual content and a separate CSS file. Now we need to know what is CSS file. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. The CSS file will contain everything to control the actual presentation of the web page. Some of the tags used to create HTML uh, page, um, a CSS file, you can see that in this diagram. For example, there are various tags used to control the content. For example, HTML tag is used to start the web page, body tag. Then there is a tag uh, or mockup H1 for the heading, then P for the paragraph. And similarly, the tags are closed. So CSS file basically contains the information of the content uh, that will be presented on a web page. IP addressing. An internet protocol IP address is a unique 32-bit reference number that is allocated to devices on a network that uses the internet protocol. IP addresses are stored as 32-bit number. 2 raised to power 32 which makes 4 billion possible unique IP addresses. For our convenience, IP addresses are usually displayed as a series of four decimal numbers, each one representing eight bits of the original binary address. Here you can see a 32-bit binary version, which includes a long stream of zeros and ones. And when we convert each byte into its decimal version, it becomes 201.160.91.127. Some IP addresses are reserved for private network ranges. Here you can see an example in the diagram 192.168.1.34. You can also see the binary version of this IP address. MAC addressing. In computer networking, a media access control address or MAC address is a unique 48-bit number assigned to a network interface card NIC to identify it on a LAN. Because they are so long, MAC addresses are usually displayed in hexadecimal. 48-bit binary version, you can see, this is a huge string of zeros and ones. 
when we convert it into the hexadecimal that becomes 00-09-7C-F1-F7-85. MAC addresses are stored as 48-bit numbers. So 2 raised to power 48 makes 281 trillion possible unique MAC addresses. Now let's finish our topic and this chapter with a very scrumptious term, cookies. But this cookie is the possession of the browser and we cannot eat it. So this is known as the HTTP cookie, web cookie or browser cookie. A cookie is a small piece of data sent from a website and stored in a user's web browser while the user is browsing that website. Every time the user loads the website, the browser sends the cookie back to the server to notify the website of the user's previous activity in computer networking. So cookies basically keeps the reference of the website which user visits. That's it of this lesson. Now let's take a quick recap. Internet. Simply, we can say that network of networks is known as internet. When we are intent to connect with each other globally, we use internet. Client server architecture. In the context of network, when one machine acts as a server to provide the services and rest of the machine acts as the client to get the services. This is known as the client server architecture. Web client is a user which puts the request to be executed, while web server is a machine that authenticate the request of web client and execute that request. Web browser is a is an application software that is used to open the web pages. Generally used web browsers are Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, and Google Chrome. ISP. ISP stands for Internet Service Provider. This is a company that provides us with the services of internet after charging fee. Protocol set of rules that defines how devices will communicate is known as protocol. HTTP. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This is a protocol that defines how messages are formatted and transmitted and how server responds to various commands. HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. This is the language that is used to create web pages. IP addressing. An internet protocol IP address is a unique 32-bit reference number that is allocated to devices on a computer network that uses the internet protocol. MAC addressing. MAC is Media Access Control. MAC address is a unique 48-bit number assigned to a network interface card or NIC to identify it on a local area network. And lastly, cookies. A cookie is a small piece of data sent from a website and stored in a user's web browser while the user is browsing that particular website. Now, this is the end of this chapter. You can download the practice question from DHA portal to solve over the weekend. Thank you so much for your attention.